Nice car. Kiwi! Hey! What have we got here? Uh, sweet old Mopa. 66 Barracuda Formula S. Um, very nice old Survivor. Absolutely. Um, can't say it's unmolested because it's had a few changes, but... You know, minor it's, ones? It's, it's minor ones. It's pretty original. It's pretty original. And you just you just walk up on it and jump in it and it's like, this is nice. This is nice. So it's a 66 Formula S, which is the high performance version of the Cuda, the Barracuda. It was, they didn't call it a Cuda until 69, but Formula S. It's got the 235 horse 273 Commando. And this is all, oh, we'll talk about that in a second. Looks like it's a, a one repaint kind of car. I think it's been touched up. I don't know it's that it's been up. a full paint. It doesn't appear to have the roof's original paint from what I can see. But it's had a bunch of touch ups around it. Um, but you know, it's 60 years old. Four speed. Oh, the, the infamous inland shifter. But look at the upholstery. The upholstery, you know, like those seats. Like, oh, yeah. Gorgeous. Nice car. And you can see it's used. It's got a baby seat in the back. This isn't this isn't like a pampered princess. The car actually goes no, he, out. He drives it quite a lot. And it's for sale. But we'll talk about that in a minute. So yeah, it's a it's a really nice survivor car. And it's rare. But it's not rare because they didn't build many of them. It's rare because not many of these cars survived the day two period. So the 273, the commando motor, I was available both in the Dart and the Barracuda. Very nice package, 235 horse for the four barrel. And the four speed was just a, it was a no cost option on these cars on a high performance 273s. But unlike the Fords and the Chevys, like the, the small, the 283 and 327 Novas, or, or Chevy 2s, the, uh, the Mustangs, the 271 horse, 289s, and the, uh, like the GT 350s, those cars were always loved. Like, even post-muscle car era, when you got into the day two period. Day two meaning the early 1970s until like early, the early 1980s, when the collector thing really started to catch on. When people were taking these cars and hot rod, well, the A-bodies, the high performance A bodies, the early ones, didn't survive. A lot of these cars were just stripped of whatever valuable high performance parts they may have and left for dead. And I remember the junkyards being full of these things, like you could trip over them. And this was back during the days when you could still find roadrunners and charges and whatnot in the junkyards. People had interest in those cars, but they didn't have interest in these early A's. And I'll, I'll show you the reason why in, in, in a second. So. I'll show you right now. These cars are based on the 1960 Valiant. And when that car was introduced, when the Valiant was introduced, it was supposed to be a Slant 6 powered car. The Slant 6 was developed specifically for that 1960 Valiant. 1961 Dodge got its version, the Lancer. The Dart was still a full size car at that point. And then they got a, re, a restyling in 1963, but still, slant six only there was no v8 that was intended to fit in these cars back then the small the smallest v8 physically smallest v8 was the polysphere which actually is one right here that's an a motor 64 they they released the 273 so the 273 is the same bottom end as a poly head but it's got the wedge cylinder heads and later became the 318 and the, the 340 and the 360 but it started in 64 with the 273 now, before the restyling for 1967, these cars all maintained the same dimensions as the 1960 Valiant. So, to fit a V8 into these cars, it's a cramped fit. The distance to the firewall, now they actually had to come up with a, a unique firewall beginning in 64 to clear a distributor on the small block. If you look at the way the exhaust is on these. Putting a set of headers or even really a, a very efficient manifold on here is nearly impossible because you've got the oil filter. I don't know, the light isn't very good here. You got the oil filter there and there's no room between the torsion bar 
and the body of the car to sneak the exhaust through. That's on the passenger side. On the driver's side, things really get tight because you've got the steering box under there. And then way back here, if you could see the back of the exhaust manifold, you can just barely see it sneaking through there, facing to the back of the car. That's a trip, that exhaust manifold is massive. Yeah. You, know, it's just, you need such a lot of it to get it out. But that was the only way that they could fit a V8 in here. It was It's really jammed in. Now on top of that, underneath the car, there's no provision for dual exhaust. There's only a single cutout. So all of these 273 Commando, the four barrel engines, all came with single exhaust. But it was a unique single exhaust because it didn't have like a, a pedestrian sort of Y pipe, you know, something that was just kind of abrupt. It actually has a flowing Y pipe that comes off the manifolds. Then it joins into a big single diameter pipe that runs to the back. And then back here, you've got this big tip. Now this car has a small resonator. They've already, they've modified this exhaust system from factory, but it would be a, a giant resonator back here. These cars, literally out of all of the muscle car type cars from the 1960s, the 273 Commandos with that exhaust, absolutely the best sounding exhaust you've ever heard on a car. Accelerating, decelerating, just sitting there idling. The big diameter single with that with that resonator back there, it's just absolute magic. Can we fire this thing up? So this is actually quieter than stock. The original exhaust on this with the original resonator was significantly louder than that, but you can hear the tone. It's just so right. These cars didn't, they, they just didn't have the street cred because they weren't easy to modify like the Fords and the Chevys were. You couldn't just easily throw headers in there. You couldn't easily just, uh, you know, dual exhaust. They were handicapped with a seven and a quarter rear. The biggest rear you can get in these things was the seven and a quarter which when everything is stock and with the four speed, I mean, it's marginal at best. Um, once you start actually stepping on it, no, no bueno. And then the tiny wheel openings, which is the biggest handicap of these first generation Barracudas. So you can see the wheel opening on this, very small and kind of weird looking. There's, there's more quarter panel than there is wheel opening. When you look at the Mustang from the same era, which is ironically the same color, you see I have a whole different treatment back here with the rounded wheel opening and then not much space between the top of the wheel opening and the top of the quarter. So it definitely has a sleeker, more muscular look where this is kind of uh, ungainly. I don't know. What's the word you would, you would use for that? Homely. 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 <laughs> Yeah, you know, it kind of looks like a fish. <laughs> it looks a little bit like a fish. But it's, oh, I mean, it's a nice car. Mm. Even just the wheel trims. The wheel trims are gorgeous. What I was looking at, like, How all many the of those details. Are missing, like, finding those a full set that's not all curved up. And this is the factory dress up on the engine. So the 273 was introduced in 1964, only as a two barrel. In 1965, they released this commando version of it. So this has got 10 and a quarter month compression. It's got the same cam that they used in the later 340s. Um, it's got closed chamber cylinder heads. These are still solid lift. They didn't go to hydraulic lifter until the next year. This is the stock factory chrome air cleaner. They had 500 CFM uh, Edelbrox, I don't know, not Edelbrox, AFBs. I don't yeah, know. That's got a 600. This is a 600. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's the, uh, that's the way they all look right from the factory. Just beautiful, beautiful engines, but a real bitch to work on.
you know if you wanted to you want to throw something a little bit bigger in there there's just no room for the exhaust now when Chrysler redesigned the overall a body package for 1967 what they did was they widened the frame rails two inches so the frame rails are two inches wider apart from each other they're the exact same frame rails but they're wider and they moved the firewall back two inches so and that was for the 1967 cars here actually so you get an idea how much more room you've got on a 67 and up a body compared to this yeah, the firewall is quite different isn't it oh yeah yeah the original firewall for this body that started again in, in 1960 1963 to, to this configuration had a, a, a like a bulge right here that you literally couldn't drop a small block into this unless you hammered it flat so in 1864 when they released the, the 273 they revised this part of the firewall to actually give you room for a distributor but that's what makes this car rare it's it's not that it was extremely low production or hard to buy the, there were a lot of these out on the street back in the day but like I said when you got to the to a point where they weren't they were no longer like regular cars and they fell into that day two period where people were hot riding them and so on and so forth nobody really saved these nobody wanted to deal with them because they were very hard to work with you had the fragile rear end and the styling only a Mopar guy could love and, and even if you're a Mopar guy you know there's still they're a, they're a little weird they're a little weird and these these inland shifters didn't help either so in, in uh when chrysler first introduced the 833 four speed in 1964 it was available in the a body and behind every engine you can get it with the four speed behind a, a 170 slant six a 225 with a 273 they used a hearst shifter they used a really nice hearst competition plus shifter and then in 65 they cheaped out and then went with this inland guessa gear yeah the guessa gear but you being a ford guy you would you would recognize that yeah 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 i should have not familiar with that too man, but that's pretty good so, yeah, I, I wanted to just show you guys this car because I mean it, it is a real nice survivor and you just don't see them like this very nice very nice car so Kiwi what yes. are you doing to this thing uh, we've got a few little things um, just really for the most part just routine maintenance just a little tune-up um, we're changing the brake master cylinder out because it's, it's got the later model one with the plastic reservoir which which he doesn't like the look of and the caps are leaking you know we've got fluid around here and it's splashing up here yeah this um, was originally a single pot and yeah and they converted to this later um but the key thing is he he came in and um he said the steering's a bit vague like you come into a corner and you turn and nothing really happens oh let's show them that yeah yeah let's show them that go ahead let's turn the steering wheel let's, let's try and get a little light so, stage down there okay so just keep your eye on the steering box Yeah, just a little bit of movement there. Okay. So, yeah, he brought it by yesterday to um, just to let me have a look at it so we could kind of get an idea of, of what we're going to go into to get it in next week. Right. Uh, and I said, yeah, you really shouldn't drive this home. No. <laughs> no. Right. It might be all right, but if it's not, like that's a if the steering fails, that's usually ends in tears. Um, because you end up driving into something that you didn't plan on driving into. Uh, so yeah, he left it with me and Ubered home and uh, yeah, so here we are. I don't think it's anything major other than the steering box has literally come loose. Literally, yeah, I, you can uh, see it when you turn the wheel. And um, yeah, so I don't, that's not a big deal, um, except when you're driving. As I said, like he likes to kind of carve some corners in some of the back country roads and he's only come up to a corner and turn and then it'll be like, <laughs> nope, need a bit more. <laughs> so, 
And yeah, I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but these valve covers, these are the stock original valve covers, these fin covers. They're just beautiful. That is... So that's a tin cover or metal cover with a little yes. add-on. It, yeah. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah. And the, the chromed PCV. Oh, yeah. And, chrome the, and the chrome... Yeah, that's all factory, too. It's nice how I've done the plug wires, too. Yeah. It's all tidy. Yeah, the 273 is probably one of the prettiest engines with the package, you know, just the presentation of it all is probably one of the prettiest engines ever produced, you know, by an American manufacturer. It's just, a, it's like a little jewel. Yeah. And you know, there was an even hotter version of this. Really? Yeah, in 1966, they did a, a package called the D-Dart. So D-Dart. The D-Dart. It was okay. a factory race car. So it was... It's, you see, this is what I mean about these, these small inch early A-bodies. They just don't get the recognition that they should. 66, they did the, the D-Dart. So that was a factory race car. The second digit in the VIN is an O. Anytime you see an O as the second digit, it means it's a factory race car. So they built these things. They were uh, bare stripper cars. No insulation, no sound deadener, no heater. Uh, you know, just, just the bare, bare basics to meet the NHRA class, the D-Stock. And they had a, a 280, 285 horse rated 273 there. Now it actually came with headers in the trunk. Very, very tricky, hard to install headers. It came with headers, came with an aluminum intake manifold and a 700, was it a 750 or a 780 Holly? But that was a, a, literally a factory race car that you just don't hear about. And that was also the only eight and three quarter application for an early uh, body. That was the big handicap with these things. You know, the street cred, why they had such a hard time getting any street cred? Because they all came with 700 quarter rears. And when you start actually leaning on them, you know, they, they just you don't really hold up. You didn't have any options back then, did you, for a different? No. no. Yeah, like the neck, the 67, came with a 700 quarter or the 8 and 3 quarter. Right. So you right. could always upgrade it, but I guess, yeah, there wasn't an option. You had to put a 9 in or something. And 67, the newer body was also the last year for this Commando 273, or for the four-barrel 273. It was replaced in 68 with the 340, which ran away, and, you know, that, that's that's the quintessential Mopar small block. And since the 340 came along, it's like, well, what's this 273? People just didn't appreciate them. But these cars are sweet. If you've never driven one of these things, especially a four-speed, you can't imagine. They're so light, they're so friendly, they're so just happy to go anywhere you want to go. That, You've driven it, you're a not it's I haven't driven this one. Oh you yet. haven't? No, because of the steering. Oh wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So but uh, that'll be coming. We'll we'll get the few the few little things sorted out and we'll road test them. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what it's like. But I imagine like I look I had a quick look on Google and they did fifteen six on the quarter yep. mile. Yep, it was a high with, fifteen second car actually yeah. you've seen. With, with an open diff and little tiny fourteen inch wheels. Yeah, just like just like my uh, my extra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're in the same the same numbers. Yeah. So yeah, they were high 15 second cars, just just the way they came from the factory. But that wasn't enough, you know, because you get into the 70s, so it's like, Mopar, big, got to have a big block, got to have a Hemi, got to have a six pack, yeah. lots of carburetors, right? And everybody wanted B bodies, you know, and, and the, you know, you had the street racer A body guys, but they were focused on the, the 67 and up A bodies and the 340 engines. So these things just were forgotten about, you know, and like I said, very few survive today because they just didn't have that street cred that the other bigger Mopars had. And I regret that. As a lifelong Mopar guy, I regret that because I'm guilty of it like anybody else. Back when I was a kid, you'd walk right past this thing. You wouldn't give it a second thought. I don't want it. I'm not interested in it. I want a Roadrunner. I want a Big Block. Or I want a Dart. And I want a 340. And, and these things just... Yeah. Parts cars. It was a parts car. And it, it's not like that anymore. So, and this one is for sale. What do you want to tell the people who might be interested in buying this one? This isn't an ad for this car. It just happens to be for sale. Yeah, it's, it's in here. Um, yeah, I mean, just reach out on the comments or something. Or, uh, you know, just look up Kiwi Classics and Customs and give me a holler. Yeah. Um, uh, it is for sale. Um, he's, he's, you know, he's... Uh, it's, a, it's a reasonably high price. <laughs> it's pretty uh, high price. But it's a, it's a survivor. It's a yeah. survivor. But, you know, there was one, there was one for sale... I had a quick look around and there was one for sale late last year, almost the same car but not as good a condition. And they wanted 22 for that and it sold. 
But, I mean, what do you get for 22 grand these days? You know, it's the truth. You don't get a lot. Um, yeah. I mean, you get, you get a, you get a fairly tired Mustang, or early Mustang coupe for that. And, like, and that, you know, that's mudded up, rusted out for all the rest of it, and, you know, you're paying that for it, so. That's true. You know, and this is not any of those. This is, okay, it, it, you know, maybe you could do a repaint one of these days, but you don't need it right well, now. Well, it's starting to sound like an advertisement. Yeah, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, let's stop. It's not an advertisement. Not an advertisement. So, if you want to see the work that he's doing on this, and actually, if you want to see it go for a ride, I would love to take it out for a ride right now, but it's raining and it's terrible and the steering box is ready to fall out. So if you want to see the progression of whatever work is done to this and an actual, you know, take it out for a drive and run it through the gears and everything, Kiwi's Crusty Couch Cushions is his channel. And uh, I'm, I'm sure you've already subscribed to it. Any, anybody that's reasonable has already subscribed to it. Well, yeah, we've yeah. got a couple of subscribers. Yeah. But yeah, it's actually Kiwi Classics and Customs, but... Or, Funny, or, we'll get it right one day. Or that one. Or that one. Yeah. All right, I got to get out of here. See you tomorrow. See you guys.